often works. And so women are not in a very good position to fight um, if their children are put up for adoption or any of those issues, and quite often they don't know, and even if they know whether they're actually produced at court, when these issues about what's going to happen to their children and the parental responsibility, whether a child is going into care, looked after by the state, or whether they're going to be adopted, and, and we discovered that to be a, a very real issue for women in prison. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Mr Rakes, you wanted the floor? Thank you. I wanted to make two points. The first one was about visits, and I spoke to the head of family services recently in a prison in Wales in the United Kingdom, and he explained when he took over the job that um, the prison staff who were assigned to visits tended to be um, the most difficult prison staff from a prison, if I can put it that way, and um, often their attitude wasn't great in terms of visitors. So he said, what I want to do is to recruit a whole new set of visitor staff because um, that's the only way we can make it work. So eventually he got his way and he recruited visit staff, particularly for that task. But the security people in the prison said, it'll be a disaster, there'll be all sorts of problems. Actually, what happened was that um, the incidents of drug smuggling and contraband and weapons and everything else went down because the prison visit staff who had better attitudes towards the families visiting meant that the families trusted them with intelligence about what was coming into the prison. And I thought that was a very important point about how good relationships between prison staff and family members quite apart from making for a much more child-friendly visit, also address security concerns as well. May I make another point on a separate issue? Yes, you have one minute and 31 seconds to do that. Okay. The other thing that I've observed in terms of mothers in prison is that they often have very poor relationships with social workers dating from when they were on, in the community and perhaps because of drug abuse, this sort of thing, social workers have a very poor opinion of them. What I also observe is that when mothers go into prison, social workers want to have nothing to do with them, if this is in the UK, saying they can come and see me when they get out of prison and that will be fine. However, that's disastrous because that means that the mothers in prison continue to think that they've got a bad relationship with a social worker and nothing changes. I came across some very good practice at Style Prison, which is um, near Manchester in the UK, of the mother and baby unit, where they make a point of bringing social workers into the prison to meet the mothers, which means that bridges are built with the mothers before they're released, which means that once the mother is released, she has a friendly face to go and see somebody she knows, and it breaks that vicious circle of... Um, uh, mothers in prison believing that social workers think they're bad mothers and then they don't see the social workers so that's the social workers so that's confirmed so I think that's another good practice point to share much uh, leader no oh I'm sorry mr. Corso Microphone, please. Is it okay now? Yeah. Yes. Um, I'm a bit sarcastic. Uh, sarcastic. Uh, uh, I was discussing with my friends, colleagues, that uh, when we are talking about uh, uh, the ministry and the which ministry the, these children uh, sh should come, and uh, and I was thinking, why not the Ministry of Defence? And by this way, they will have ample budget. Because, because our, our, this ministry takes everything from us. Uh, anyways, but in principle, what I think is uh, these children should come under the Ministry of Human Rights or either Ministry of Human Rights or Social Welfare. And, uh, and, and second, point, uh, uh, second point, 
that I would like to say about the tra training of prison officials. Uh, uh, I did listen about uh, uh, a five days training. Uh, I think uh, once again I'm emphasizing on this, that five days training is not the, the solution of the, uh, the issue and the problem. We should have, we should focus on the institutionalizing of uh, trainings. And this is only possible when we are putting pressure and focusing on, on making child rights as a part of curricula, syllabus of training and academies, prison academies. That, that is the way that we can attain this goal. When they will realize, these people will realize that it is from their heads, it is part of their uh, law. So that's why they will, otherwise they take it like this is an NGO approach, outside approach. When it is a part of their curricula, they will feel that this is their own approach to address issues of these people and these group, certain groups of people. The other important thing about age, I feel that this may be different in Canada. 18 months, okay. And a reference point, breastfeeding is okay. But what about country like Pakistan, where a child who has no support up to 10 years, where he or she should go. When we are fixing, of thinking to fix an age, we should not make anything that compel or pressurize the administration, prison administration, government of Pakistan, to fix three years and the, and the, the children above three years are not living with their mothers. And outside, they are deprived of everything they were little bit protected inside the prisons. We have to set minimum or maximum ages, or we have to leave up to the, uh, in the ground realities, uh, living conditions, or in each country. Thank you so much. Thank you very much. Uh, we, I think we are now getting a little closer to uh, what we would like to see coming out of this working group, our recommendations. If I may ask uh, Severin, to, since we have the assistance of this modern technology and the screen, that uh, I know our break time is from 4.30, so that uh, during that break and a, a little shortly afterwards, if you can give us some skeletal um, headings and, and we can all view this and then come with a consensus as a working group to report back to the plenary. Um, I am seeing now we're getting a little closer to our items that we will be including will be, of course, again, uh, the age group. And I, I, I take on board with you, Mr. Koso, that maybe the Ministry of Defense could, must be uh, in charge of all the budgeting and all the services. But the age is uh, something that we need to consider. And I think that some of the recommendations, suggestions that came out were setting a minimum and a maximum, indicators, uh, uh, some of the factors that should be governed uh, around the planning of the ages. Uh, uh, I know that the committee, when we did our general comment number 10 on the administration of juvenile justice, there was a lot of debate on the age of minimum age of criminal responsibility. We have a paragraph that says it should not be any lower than 12, and if countries who have it higher should not never lower it, and even for countries with 12 or so, or, or even young, lower, to see to raising it. The international community just honed in on the age 12. And so I'd like to remind ourselves that if we set a, a, an age, that's something that uh, governments or other stakeholders will try to use that and say, hey, this is what the international uh, standard is. And so we may, that, that minimum to maximum seems to be uh, a, a very good criteria. Uh, excuse me. Yes, madam, you have the floor. Before I, and after you, you, I will continue on kind, uh, sort of streamlining a little bit for our discussion. Yes, madam. Thank you very much. Just a quick point on 
um, age. I'm, my name is Rebecca Carter Dillon. I'm a lecturer in early childhood studies at Plymouth University in the UK. And I think we need to be careful when we think about international standards that are based around age because they, they would only work if there was universal registration of children at birth. And I think that needs to be included in any recommendations around age that that needs to happen first before a child's entitlement based on their age can can be um, taken into consideration. Much a point uh, well noted here. Uh, then we have the issue of uh, the status of children uh, from uh, parent, mothers who are in prison, uh, especially for foreign uh, nationals. Do they have a status? And also with registration, and this may also uh, be linked with what you're saying, is uh, when and how uh, will these children be registered and, and so and so forth. Another uh, item might be the uh, statutory uh, responsibility of who is, who would be responsible in the form of a government organ to oversee these children. And of course I see uh, many people indicating um, research needs to be done. And I think we can uh, link that with uh, other previous uh, speakers on, me on methodology uh, and, uh, and if we can call for the international community to do a global or regional research on the actual quantitative as well as the qualitative uh, nature of children in, um, with incarcerated parents. Uh, Yes, madam. Whoops, here we go. Uh, Hess the bait again, Sushi Ladama International, speaking for myself now, um, to support the protection of the unborn child uh, and the mother's rights around that pregnancy. Um, certainly, there is an instance uh, from uh, Tierra Viva in Argentina of a young mother losing her child in childbirth because the prison authorities could not make up their minds whether or not she should have the child in prison or in the hospital. And I understand that in Britain too, women may not know until six m weeks before the birth whether they will be allowed to have the child uh, in hospital and indeed whether they will be allowed to keep the child. Um, I, I was quite surprised to read that fact and wonder if it has since been changed. Thank you. Thank you very much and I have this gentleman in the middle, sir. Um, seriously, I understand that the minister Ministry of Defense would be the best uh, uh, allocator of uh, budget. But uh, seriously, I think we should say something about changing the highest uh, political responsibility. For example, why not on a certain part of the, you know, all the or the legal and uh, path that the offender has to be submitted to. Why not by, it, it couldn't be you know, picked up at a certain point by the Ministry of Education, because but there is a lot of education in these issues, a lot. We were talking about training officers, but we have to train families, we have to train uh, fathers, mothers, children, even children, because it's very difficult. You, you know perfectly, it's very, one of the most difficult things when you manage one of these cases is to and make uh, children understand what a prison is. And you know perfectly, they, uh, most of the time you lie them. You say, father got in the hospital, father has a new work uh, around uh, on the other side of the world and so forth. That's what you always say. It's wrong, but you use these lies just because it's even difficult to educate children to this new father and mother situation. 
So Minister of Education should be one of the stakeholder of this, of all these issues. And I realize that the, the other issue I would like to introduce is too late, and I guess it's too difficult, even too big. But it's a recommendation about media. We need media. They only speak about prison, mothers, children in prison, families, mafias, families, because I'm from Italy, I feel this argument very, very much. They always talk about prison only as a punishment, of course. How many years we had to, you know, to sentence for robbery or this and that. So media, it's a very difficult issue. Maybe it's not this, the, the, the occasion, the event, but I likely say it's one of the most important in this society now, 2011. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, another uh, item that could be included would, I think, w what I'm hearing is justice for women in prison, such as legal counsel or uh, relationship with social worker, the support for women in prison uh, whilst they're uh, serving their term. Uh, another area is the uh, uh, visitations, issues around visitations, and I think one of the subtopics within that a big topic would be the reconciliation of the best interest of the child and also the prison security issues. Uh, the issue around pregnant women all the antenatal, prenatal, and postnatal, and all the other support, we have to uh, have another uh, item on that, possibly. Um, training for prison officials, what kind, how long, what's the scope? I think maybe we could come up with some ideas uh, in the afternoon for that. I have, uh, yes, madam, you have the floor. Thanks, madam. Just a short contribution. Unfortunately, I arrived later, so I, I don't know if the point has been already raised. But uh, I would like to raise the issue of children, of incarcerated uh, parents, uh, which can have disabilities. So it's important also to tackle this condition in the recommendation. Thanks. They need special care. Thank you very much. I think there was somebody on this side. The lady. Yes, yes, madam. The mic the microphone. It was just further to the point about lying to children in terms of the support that we need to give to parents is that we should really encourage them to tell the truth to their children about where they are because psychologically the impacts on children of being told lies are so great. I know it's more for the other workshop, but I felt that since we had a reference to lying, it was really important that we, we take that on board because children need to know. Much we have, uh, yes, sir, go ahead, sir. Thank you, Madam Chair. I would also like us to take into account the police stage of the detention. It's true, we've talked about prisons, but detention starts with custody in the hands of the police. With our organization in Cote d'Ivoire, we've been able to cut in half the number of children accompanying their mothers in detention, for example, by focusing on the stage of police custody parents uh, and trying to make children, uh, mothers understand when the children are not very young to give them to a close relative or to hand them over to a foster family. Thank you very much. Yes, thank you. Yes, sir, the gentleman behind. Microphone, please. 
Thank you for giving me the floor. With your permission, I would also like to say something briefly about everything that's been set up until now, simply. Oh, I have to introduce myself. Tony Mwaba. I represent here the NGO Growing Up Together, which is a member of the BIC. The NGO is in Kinshasa, the Democratic Republic of Congo. I was saying then that I had been listening carefully to the discussions up until now, but there is one point that I think has not been fully taken into account concerning the different recommendations which have been put forward up until now. First of all, I'd like to point out that everybody here agrees that having a child in a prison constitutes a danger for the future of that child. When we take into account the consequences, the psychosocial consequences that this will have on the behavior of the child in the future, now, it can be justified that a child is in prison if the child has shown some sort of criminal or para-criminal behavior, which it has to assume uh, criminal responsibility for. But the situation becomes serious and even unfair when the child is in a prison environment because of one of his or her parents. So what should we do? I think the ideal solution would be to place them outside of the framework of the prison, regardless of what scenario you come up with. What's important is for the child to be kept out of the penitentiary environment. And yet, at the same time, there is a provision in the convention according to which the child should not be separated from his or her mother. So this is an obstacle here. Now, there are interests involved here that we have to reconcile in the, the recommendations we are supposed to put forward, because we have to reconcile the interests of the state, the need to uphold public order, and the interests of the child, including the interests of the mother uh, to whom that child is attached, who must bear some criminal liability for the behavior. So I think we need to come up with recommendations which take into account first and foremost of the ideal uh, situation, that is that the prison, regardless of what type of prison it is, regardless of what you can propose in terms of caring for the child, even if you recognize the status of a child accompanying his or her mother in prison, these environments still remain very dangerous and give rise to criminal attitudes in children. I even think it can be seen as a uh, like a fish in an aquarium where the oxygen is uh, controlled from outside. It's not a good thing. And I think we need to come up with recommendations which will have an impact on national legislators to try to shape certain laws in such a way as to where a, a woman, for instance, who has a child under five is convicted, the child is in preschool age, uh, should, and that woman should be allowed to serve her sentence in the home. We've talked about um, conditional imprisonment. If a mother has a child who is under five or is not yet of school age, can legally serve her sentence at home. We call this conditional conviction. It is. Uh, well, it's not a problem if the child is of school age, then uh, there is an official who came back and said to me, well, you've been saying at this age uh, the child must uh, not be separated from his or her mother, but what happens uh, in the hospital? There is a m mother, a, a child is, say, two years of age. The mother is in uh, intensive care, and no one can have access to her. The child is outside. And uh, the mother may be alone in the operating room, and uh, the child is uh, not allowed to go in. So I think this is the idea. We have to keep talking about it. We have to try to ensure that a child with a preschool, um, a, a mother with a preschool child, could serve her sentence at home. And I think this would resolve many of the problems. Thank you very much. 
Thank you very much. I'm sorry I overlooked our uh, representative from Luxembourg. Did you want the floor, sir? Um, with regard to the age, the, the maximum age for children in prisons, I agree with the previous speaker. I don't think children should be in a prison environment, but there are arguments that suggest that a child could be left initially with their mother, particularly if they're born during the prison sentence. In Luxembourg, it's not allowed to give birth in prison. You must also always give birth in a hospital. But then the mother can have their child with them in the prison. But taking into account all of the considerations, you also think we need to think about the psychological effects for the development of the children. Obviously, from the age of 15 or 18, the child reaches a, a stage of development in terms of their sensibility and their, their, their awareness. They're at a very difficult stage of development that uh, is not compatible with the possibilities available in a prison environment. So I would suggest that we create a recommendation that allows us to explore all methods available before placing a child in a prison environment and certainly not beyond that age. With regard to the budget, I would just say that it's essential that the budget is drawn up by the competent Ministry for Child Welfare. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, Julia? Uh, that relate to previous inputs. The first is in relation to pre-trial detainees. There is a major project under, underway at present in sub-Saharan Africa and I think also in parts of Eastern Europe that's being driven by the Open Society Initiative, the Soros Foundation, with its own um, studies that have been undertaken in very many countries of the pre-trial detainee population, including women, uh, where there is a disproportionate number of women by comparison, at least in the countries that I'm aware of, Zambia, Malawi, um, compared to sentenced women. And I would urge the committee to engage with the literature that's very fast emerging um, on the, pre -trial, the international pre-trial detainee project in relation to this issue. Uh, second, the issue of budget has been, been raised uh, by the chairperson herself before lunch. And in this, in this regard, it's a very difficult issue because the Ministry of Prisons is not going to budget for children in prison when it's the responsibility of another ministry. And I also would like to re-emphasize the point I made that countries which, that can't feed their prisoners, their male prisoners, are hardly going to be able to find extra money in the budget uh, for specialized mother and baby units. And then the third point I'd like to make very briefly is about criminal justice reform, the justice sector reform. There are a number of countries that I'm familiar with that have had uh, uh, initiatives to do justice sector reform through various UN agencies, uh, not this committee, and UNICEF is very often not involved. And that is problematic because when justice sector reform, or otherwise known as rule of law reform, takes place, uh, children's issues frequently don't emerge in those projects, those multi-sectoral projects. And to that end, I would like to propose that this committee uh, makes a recommendation to all other UN agencies that are involved in justice sector reform to take account of the issue um, that we're dealing with today, whether it's uh, the judiciary who are sentencing, whether it's the people who are constructing prisons, uh, whether it's the people who are developing police training curricula, and so forth and so forth. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, Ms. Wijerman? Thank you, uh, Madam Chairperson. Uh, mine is also related to the, um, the justice issue and the recommendation related to judicial reform. Uh, just, a, just a quick addition. Uh, it is, uh, and the fact is that if uh, some, kind of, um, some kind of policy decisions could be made by the judicial system to expedite all cases where the mother is pregnant or has a child, because what happens uh, in the 
system is that whether you're pregnant or whether you have a child, the, the mothers fall into the same, you know, same procedures where there are lengthy periods in prison before the case is heard. So to get to, to ensure that in that reform that uh, any, any woman who's pregnant or who has a child is given priority uh, for speedy, uh, you know, resolution of the judicial portion so that, uh, you know, sh she, she gets priority over other, uh, other people who have committed offences. Thank you. Uh, I have Lisa Myers. Thank you. Um, I just wanted to join my voice to all the comments that have been about age and as we've seen, as you mentioned previously with the general comment number 10, um, sometimes the, the age has been misused and has led to states reducing the age of criminal responsibility. So I think, as been discussed today, it's important to, to look at principles, such as the one about best interests, which we've discussed a lot. Um, but this principle is always um, very subjective. And so I think it will be useful to have um, the committee's general comment on this and when you're drafting it to think about this, this issue as well um, in relation to best, best interest. And then there are other principles or issues that are probably worth thinking about, such as the evolving capacity of the children to understand what the situation is, and um, that's linked to also the education they get or the information that the, the parents should transmit to their children. And then finally, I just wanted to say that it would be good to have some think about the other forms of detention that were briefly touched upon today. And we haven't had enough time to go into a lot of detail, but it's something that should come out in the recommendation because we're not just talking about prison. Thank you. Yes, thank you, uh, Lisa, um, uh, for reminding us uh, of our best interest of the child general comment. We hope to f uh, finalize this uh, by the end of this year and then in the beginning, early part of next year, have that adopted. Uh, I think one more uh, heading that I, I'm hearing is, uh, is custodial sentencing, uh, is that an option or should that be the first priority? I think our uh, question would be around alternative forms of sentencing, uh, the conditional conviction, or maybe uh, it, within the establishment of a legislative framework to look at alternative forms of sentencing uh, prior to uh, determining sentencing issues. Uh, that might be one of the recommendations that we could look into. I have uh, a lady from the back here. Yes, madam. Um, Marie Hutton, a PhD student at the University of Cambridge. Um, about prison visits, it's something that uh, occurred to me that quite frequently in the UK, the amount and quality of prison visits um, received are often linked to the behaviour of the prisoners concerned. So we have an incentives and privileges um, system whereby those who are the most enhanced get the best quality visits um, and the longest amount of time. Um, and it seems to me that this doesn't, uh, there are a few prisons that don't take this approach and treat visits as a right per se, um, but they are very much few and far between. And it just seems to me that this is something we have to think about because it's obviously not very child-centred. And by linking um, the quality of visits to the parent's behaviour, it's not in line with the view that the rights of the child are inviolate. And it feels to me very much that it's treating prisoners' children as carrots at the end of a very long stick. Um, and that's just something that I wanted to add. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, Miss Huber, did you have something to say? Yes, okay. Thank you. Um, I will, uh, it's Andrea Huber from uh, Penal Reform International. Uh, I'll try to focus on, on, on the recommendations, but one thing um, I just wanted to stress again, it seems to me that um, there are two decisions in terms of responsibility that we need to keep in mind. One is 
a ministry that has kind of an oversight responsibility, uh, and I, I don't know very honestly what what ministry that should best be. Not in all countries there is a ministry of human rights, and in many countries where there is one, they don't have the most of of uh, resources or authority. So I'm I'm not sure about that, but. Um, that is one factor, but then a different kind of responsibility that has to be allocated is the authority that will undertake the assessment uh, with whatever guidelines or criteria um, we all might be able to come up with um, at, at some point. So I just wanted to stress there is kind of two different responsibilities that have to be allocated. Uh, one recommendation that uh, we would be very pleased to see uh, in the results of this uh, uh, exercise is the recommendation to implement the Bangkok rules. And that is because there is some bits and pieces in there that actually address the problem we are discussing here. Um, there is, for example, a provision that says mothers shall not be prevented from breastfeeding simply because they are in prison. But there is also a whole section on non-custodial measures and, and a bit more. Um, I should say that uh, the Bangkok rules are written from the point of view of the women, though. So um, it, it will certainly not be sufficient because we are talking about the interests and rights of the child, not the parents. Um, so I wanted to stress that, um, but, but great importance to the implementation of these rules. On funding, I just wanted to say one thing, because it has mentioned that NGO projects should be long term. And I think that could um, come down to a recommendation to donors, actually, because the reason why NGOs are not able to run long-term projects is because the donors um, only uh, tender very short-term projects, and then you have to apply and reapply. There might be gaps in, in, in the conduct of the program and, and all the rest. So the recommendation there would be for donors to fund long-term projects. And the last one um, would be in the study or research that we were talking about, I think, um, to address specifically the children of prisoners on death row and of prisoners who are on lifelong sentences, because the psychological effects and the the the, the problem of how you should um, how you should address the relationship between the parents and those children and what is in the best interest of the child. Um, for, for this specific group is seems particularly difficult to me. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mr. Cardona. Gracias. Uh, Thank you. I'll introduce myself because it's the first time I'm speaking. I'm Jorge Cardona, member of the Committee on the Rights of the Child. I would like to go back to the point made by the chairperson relating to alternative sentencing. And I wanted to bring us to conclusions which would include the idea raised before by our colleague when she said that the general rule should be not applying sentences where with deprivation of freedom for those responsible for a child under eight years old. This should be a general rule. There may be some exceptions, of course, but it should be a, a fun, a, the foundation principle. And this could be applied more strictly when it comes to pre-trial custody, and that this could be adopted to this situation. And that the deprivation of freedom should never be applied before previously deciding what is going to happen to the children that are dependent on that person. And that the legal proceedings are, are obviously very, they take a long time. There are criteria that we need to evaluate on a case by case basis, obviously, but before the, the deprivation of freedom of liberty takes place, we need to decide what's going to happen to the child. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, we have SOS. Thank you very much. Um, I'm Magdalena Krenz, speaking of behalf, on behalf of SOS Children's Villages. And I would like to make a short note on prison visits. 
My organization is concerned that children wanting to visit prison can have their right to parental contact impeded, not only by prison regulations, distances and travel costs. For example, one of our national associations has expressed concerns that school regulations do not recognize prison visits with parents as a justifiable absence from school. In such cases, children find themselves in conflict with school disciplinary procedures. We recommend that the day of general discussion outcomes note the need to respect the child's right to contact in all the settings children inhabit. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Uh, uh, Dr. Rina? Yes. Um, yeah, I just, um, um, I'm Rani Shankadas. Um, I was just uh, thinking, we've had such good feedback, but at the end of it, uh, perhaps there's only that much we can do until we actually um, measure and investigate fully and methodically uh, the nature and intensity of the problem. And when I say problem, I mean here, um, it's been alluded to uh, by speakers in the morning, uh, the actual damage, qualitative and other, that uh, incarceration does to the child and to the family unit. And whether, so this would impinge on things like age or separation from the mother and for how long and what have you. Um, so when we say prison is not a suitable place, um, it really would also have to be supplemented with what we are suggesting as alternatives. Uh, there's the alternative relating to incarceration of the mother, i.e. Uh, she should not be if it's a small offense. Then there's alternative for where a child should go however we decide and however long the child lives. If you're talking about shelter homes, care homes, what have you, there are various regions where uh, that would be a no-no. Uh, and if we don't want it to be a no-no and it want, want it as a suitable alternative, then that also comes within our purview of um, monitoring reform and what have you. Um, so uh, that's an area which willy-nilly would also have to be considered. What, are, what is the kind of shelter home or care home that exists in a lot of regions? Is it almost worse than the prison? Or is it better if it's worse? How can it be monitored, improved, what, whatever? Um, then the, the bit of uh, the thing that I alluded to in the morning about uh, information about children and it, it not being at all formally within the system, uh, whether it's at time of arrest, uh, at the time of sentence, or during incarceration. Um, <clears throat> I, I know of a lot of cases where judges have sentenced mothers or fathers to prison, and we conducted a survey of, say, about, 50, I think, 50-plus district judges, and only five had actually seen the inside of a prison. So the, the training that we talk about uh, it can't just be a course training or even for police a gender sensitization, which has become a part and parcel of a lot of courses of training. It's a little about seeing visually, especially for the judge, uh, what exactly is happening inside the prison when he sentences a mother inside the prison. So we're talking of three arms of the criminal justice system which have to be um, uh, trained, I mean trained is a, a limited word, apprised, acquainted, familiarized with where uh, these family units are being sent and how they can you know, work around it in, uh, in, within the ambit of what we suggest as alternatives. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, I, am, this, I am hearing another item, which is uh, the justice reform, where, uh, to be involved in the, uh, the justice reform and the rule of law reform. Uh, it, I think I'm hearing that reconciliation between uh, the state interest the best interest of the child and the mother's interest. So it's the whole 
issue of the, the training of uh, familiarizing of the judges and, and the legal personnel would p perhaps fall under this whole justice reform. And, and stemming out from that justice reform would continue to the training of the prison officials, etc. So it's the whole spectrum of the justice reform. Uh, I don't know if we can have another item, for instance, uh, in terms of reconciliation between the criminal justice and the child protection. I don't know if that would also f fall under the justice reform, but I think this, the, uh, the relationship between uh, the child protection and uh, criminal justice it needs to also be looked at a little bit uh, more closely. Uh, are there any uh, comments? Because I know we are running ahead of time. We have five more minutes, but this will give our, oh, sorry. I, sorry, Severin, I was going to give you a little more time to prepare this list, but uh, yes, madam, go ahead. Okay, so I'm Rosian Roos from the University of Tampere, Finland. I have just two short comments. Um, in the recommendations, there should be that the, the statistics of these children should be provided by the state, not only the researchers, because then it's not um, all the time there. And the second point is that the children who, for example, are in the prison with their mothers, they are entitled to have a contact with their fathers as well, if, if there is one available. And at least in Finland, uh, many of the fathers of these children are in prison too, too, which makes it very extremely difficult to organize the, the meetings. These two points, thank you. Uh, during our break, I think, uh, uh, Severin will list up all the, I, I think I have about 10 big headings or maybe 12 and this is about what we would expect from uh, a working group, uh, like about 10 to 12 recommendations coming out from each working group so that it, uh, when we put the two working groups together, the recommendations coming out of today's day of general discussion will be a, approximately 20 or so. So uh, if Severin can work very quickly and I think uh, our conference officers could help assist us to put this on the screen so while we come back we can look at these items and then we'll have a more focused uh, discussion on these items to come up with very concrete recommendations. Okay. Thank you and with this 10-minute uh, break, thank you. And that we want to shy away from having a, a particular age, maximum age, but to have uh, a range or I'm at your hands. If, yes, uh, Mr. Mahdi. Thank you, Madam Chairperson. I think with regard to age, one has to bear in mind the two years age for mothers for breastfeeding. And this, in my view, should be the minimum age to be used in this context. Whether we would have a maximum age or not, I think maybe not advisable to have maximum age. And we have to leave it to the legislation of each and every country for the maximum. But minimum should be not below two in any case. Thank you. Yes, madam. Um, uh, I'm, I'm wondering whether um, actually doing a very strict cutoff on the age is what we are looking for. Um, maybe what we're looking for is the guidelines and the framework within which those who decide what should be done with the children uh, we need to uh, point a direction, you know, in that direction. Uh, this would apply to those who arrest, to the judges, to the incarcerators. 
so it really is about giving uh, guidelines, but then these guidelines must have an input from uh, experts that deal with child development issues, which we often miss out because we just choose arbitrary de uh, ages and they may not be useful. And there are prisons where uh, there are disabled children, blind uh, or with some other physical deformity, and they're aged eight and 10. So you really would have to lay down the guidelines in a very concrete and informed way, rather than make a totally strict um, you know, age limit uh, on the you know, upper. Okay, so we would uh, recommend that uh, there would be guidelines which are informed by the ch different specialists and to have, uh, not to have a maximum age is what this uh, working group will come up with but to be informed by all the other um, child development or, or uh, relevant research that is rel uh, would guide. But we, we could identify some uh, principles, which would be the, 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 the ind individual situation of the child within the individual various context. Uh, for instance, if it's a breastfeeding age, nursing age, or uh, other factors that may need to be considered. So in terms of age, that would be, uh, we would be f fair to say that was the recommendation coming out of this. Maybe it might not be better for us to um, start with our number one recommendation as uh, non-custodial sentencing as a priority instead of going into the age first. How was yeah. that yeah. accepted? Okay. I have uh, our uh, colleague from Luxembourg, and uh, yes, go ahead, sir. Yes, unfortunately, my intervention was concerning age, and uh, I would say that it would be good to have uh, some kind of specification uh, saying that the age that is accepted uh, for a child to be in prison should be given according to the environment that the child can meet in this prison and according to uh, in what, uh, in what uh, extent uh, the child can have the stimulus and possibilities that it needs to have a good development according to that age it is in at that time. I'm sorry, co dear uh, colleagues. We have until 5.20. And so let me just read the recommendations that transpired out of uh, today's working group. And then we, if we need to come back to them uh, item by item, I think we'll do that. Okay. The second, the, f the first one is the non-custodial sentencing as a priority, which includes the legislative framework that includes conditional convictions. The second would be age. The third is the statutory responsibility. Who would be responsible to oversee these children and coordination between the different ministries? Um, justice for women in prison, legal counseling, etc. Uh, issues around visitations issues, keep contact with the father as well. Uh, reconciliation of the best interest of the child and prison security concerns. I think this relates to the visitation issues. Um, the pregnant women, issues surrounding pregnant women, uh, the counseling, the antenatal care, the prenatal, the postnatal, and provisions of having the children in the hospitals and all the issues surrounding pregnant women. Uh, the justice reform, that is uh, including reconciliation between the state interest, the best interest of the child, and the mother's interest. Uh, within that uh, ambit, I think, the training for prison officials. It should be institutionalized. It can't be just a one-off, uh, three-day, five-day uh, course. Uh, reconciliation of criminal justice and protection of the children in terms of ensure that the juvenile justice legislation is in line with the CRC. I don't know if uh, uh, we have uh, questions on that. But methodology for clear statistics and data. And I think what I heard earlier today was that 
uh, it's a state responsibility, whichever ministry is in charge to oversee these children to provide us with the uh, relevant statistics and data. Uh, fight against social stigma and media sensitization. Uh, children with uh, uh, disabilities and other special needs should be considered when we are discussing the age uh, limit. I think it may be under that category too. We would, we would have several uh, principles that guide us, I think. Uh, right to information of the child, uh, I don't know in which context that was. Oh, that children are often lied to about whereabouts of the, the parent. Okay. The reintegration process, lack of research at the regional and global levels. Uh, maybe this could be termed into more research at the local, regional, and at the global level, too, I would, I, I would say, at the national, regional, and global level. Possibility to work and make money inside the detention center, that was not raised during our discussion at all. Uh, so we may want to revisit that issue. Uh, issues about birth registration, nationality, and civil rights. Implementation of the Bangkok rules and other relevant norms and standards. And if we can scroll up, please. oh, that's, that's it. Right. Oh, yeah. okay. All right. I, just from the uh, this preliminary list, uh, do you see anything that we left out, or that we need to add? Yes, Mr. Koso. Microphone, please. Is it okay now? That's okay now. Uh, we are missing, uh, I think, uh, I might miss, I might have missed. Parents detained in foreign countries, have we? And are we talking about uh, NGOs role and, and access to them in these uh, places, in detention places? And uh, I might have missed about uh, alternative to care. We are, we are talking about the non-custodial, but alternative care institutions. Absolutely. Thank you. I think one of the other items was the alternative uh, solutions, uh, alternative uh, uh, sentencing. And I think what I heard earlier was before creating new alternatives, perhaps to do a, a study of the existing alternatives in, at the national level, too. Uh, yes. I'm seeing many hands. I have uh, Madame Salman, and I have uh, Leda, and then I have uh, the lady in the back, with her hands. So, please. No. All right. Uh, Leda. Thank you. It's, um, it's not adding something, just I was going to suggest that justice reform should go first because I think reconciliation of between the, best, the state interest and the best interest is how it should start. I'm not so uh, convinced that mother's interest should go in that as the first way because we have maybe to add slash main carers because we may have single families, mother's not been alive and this, if I'm going to add it, but I'm not so sure whether it should go among the first. But I think reconciliation of the state interest and the best interest of the child should be the starting point for us. Thank you. Okay, and the caregiver, main caregiver's interest, but the first would be the state and the child interest. Well, the child interest, reconciliation between the best interest of the child and the state interest. Okay. Uh, we have, uh, yes, madam. In relation to the reconciliation of um, criminal justice and protection of children, I wonder if we might specify what we heard about um, what happens under the African Charter this morning, that it should be the responsibility of a court sentencing a primary caregiver to custody to satisfy itself that suitable arrangements are being made for the care of the children so they don't fall you know, between that gap. Um, and just very briefly on the age question, I wondered if a succinct way of, of putting what people have been saying would simply be to say that it should be based on the professionally assessed needs of the child. Thank you. Based on certain 
uh, principles and professional needs assessment of the child. Okay, thank you. Uh, I have Ibfan. Thank you. Um, just two brief um, notes. First of all, I, uh, I would suggest that when we talk about pregnant women, we can maybe add pregnant and lactating women. And then, uh, in my opinion, something is missing, which is about providing children that are in prisons with um, healthcare service, for example, or uh, someone mentioned spaces for um, uh, specific spaces. Or So I think the provision of services uh, which are addressed to children in particular uh, is probably missing in this point. Thank you. Services, health care, educational, play, uh, re uh, services. Okay. Uh, this is with, under the presumption that they are detained. Uh, custodial detention, is that's, that's the presumption, but okay. But to have a separate area where uh, they are housed, maybe, it was our first primary concern. Okay. Uh, Rachel, and then I have Mr. Rakes. Rachel. Thank you. In um, the point on non-custodial measures, it's not just sentencing, because it's also the pre-trial and under trials in some cases. So if we could just tweak that one to make sure it includes those as well. Thank you. Non-custodial measures and that we might say, uh, including pre-trial, under trial, or, or sentencing. OK, thank you. Mr. Rakes. Under the uh, point about um, visitation, I think it would be good to add something about the importance of privacy and physical contact. Um, the reconciliation of um, children's best interest and security concerns, I think that conveys the win-win that trusting relationships equal better security. I think that's fair, but we might might be possible to state that more clearly. Um, and the final one was the justice for um, women prisoners around how they're treated by social workers, because I think that is key in terms of what happens with children and building bridges there somehow. Yes, thank you. I think there was a section on justice for women yeah. Yeah. regarding social work, relationship with the social worker and legal counsel and all the issues around the uh, uh, incarcerated That's women. Really yeah. Okay. Relationship with social workers, etc. Okay. Any other? Mr. Yes, Mr. Kosos.